guys, welcome back to LS Vintage Design. I'm Lisa. How's everyone doing today? I hope you are having an amazing day. It's a beautiful March, late March day. Hope it is where you are. Today we are here to talk about how you can tell the difference between vintage and repop. And I have a lot of examples for you, so let's just jump in. And first thing I want to say is if you get had by something, don't feel bad. I, I deal with vintage and I got had. Sometimes you get had because you see a piece and you just really like it, you think it's really cool, and you don't take five seconds to check it. It happens. Happened with me and my hubby on this one. We got this a few years ago. Well, actually probably about six years ago now. And we thought, oh, how cool is that? That's a cool chip and dip. It's got that vintage mid-century mod look. It has to be real because it's melamine. And then if I had taken five minutes to flip it over, it says made in China. It says made in China on the back. Five minutes. That's all it would have taken in each of the little bowls. But I didn't do it because I got so wrapped up that it was melamine and that it had such a cool look to it that it had to be vintage. So the first rule of thumb is when you find anything you like, is it really vintage or is it repop, new? Flip it over and see where it's made. If it's made in Japan, it's vintage. If it's made in China, it's not. So that's easy right there. There's a lot of Tupperware dupes out there. And there's a lot now older Tupperware dupes out there. Because I hate to say this, but the 80s are vintage now. Vintage is 25 years. 25 years or older. So actually 1999 is the cutoff point. Think about that one. So anyway, so how do you tell if a vintage Tupperware is true? If Is it vintage? And you can tell vintage Tupperware, they always, they always say Tupperware. They'll have a number. The lids are all marked. So it's pretty easy to tell. And the vintage Tupperware, if you say you get Tupperware and you're not sure if the Tupperware, comparing Tupperware to Tupperware, the newer colors will be, they did some darker, bold colors. They did some like maroons. And in the 50s, everything was pastels. So you can tell by colors. Now, they recently brought all that back. But you can still tell by the design on the bottom and by the way the lids fit. This is a chalk figure. It was a prize in the 30s and 40s from carnivals and fairs, that sort of thing. Now, how do I know this is truly vintage? And let me start stop by saying one thing you can do for anything vintage is research on the internet. But be careful because sometimes they'll get you on there too. So make sure your sources are reliable when you're researching if something is vintage or not. Now, back to my little friend here. This is a chalk figure. You can tell if you look at the bottom, it's solid. Back in the day, they were made in molds, okay? An actual mold, it was poured into, they were set, boom. You had chalk figures. Modern, there's a hole in the bottom and they're standing up and there, there's a, a rod and it fits on that rod and they pour the mold in and they're going down this way. So it's the way they were manufactured. So you need to know, and this is true for other figurines as well, is there a hole in the bottom or not? How they were poured. Were they poured standing up with the rod or were they poured laying down. One of the biggest things that has so many fakes are the 
Staffordshire dogs right here. How can you tell if a Staffordshire dog is a repop or is it a true vintage piece? One, it's the holes on the bottom again, how they're actually manufactured. Two, it's the coloring. True Staffordshire dogs have that brownish color. They'll have some black markings on them. The uh, newer ones are black. They don't have the same markings. So those are easy to check online. Corningware. There is a lot of corningware. How do you know is yours vintage or not? Okay. Vintage Corningware versus new repopped Corningware. You can tell by the mark on the bottom. This is a 1960s mark. How to read the marks when they're straight across and they're in the center, they're real light. Those are the 90s. You can tell the age of Corningware by the mark on the bottom. This will tell you the age of how to how old it is. Now, what about artwork? Maybe it's in a cool frame and you think, oh, that's vintage. And then you find out later looking online, it's not vintage, it's a repop. What are some giveaways? Well, there's a couple. One, there were wood frames used, not plastic wood frame so you can tell if your frame is real wood or not you can also tell by the condition of the backing paper or if it's missing what does the inside look like but you can tell this is aged and people when they're trying to sell stuff they're not going to age the back they don't think about it but look you can tell by the layers in this too that it's real aged Another way to tell is it's held in with nails. It has little finishing nails or it'll have staples holding the actual artwork in place. It doesn't have those little flippy things now that we have in place that you can change your artwork real easily. When they created artwork back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 40s, it was supposed to stay. They weren't supposed to pull it out. And that's why it has either the staples right there, the little finishing nails. And lastly, let's talk about some salt and pepper shakers. Finally, let's talk about how to tell maybe repop from vintage salt and pepper shakers. One way is by the stopper. Modern salt and pepper shakers come with plastic stoppers. Vintage come with wood or cork stoppers. Can somebody change that out? Yes, but finding real vintage stoppers are hard to do. So that's one way. Again, you might have tags on the bottom that will give you a place of manufacture or a, a country of manufacture or a business that you can research and find out more about when they were made. Maybe something comes with no date, but it has that look. It's definitely older and but it's not actually vintage. Okay, so know what's available in your time frames. So guys, that's just some of the ways that you can tell repop from vintage. Now I wanna talk about one last thing. We always see signs, whether like this, whether it's gas signs or comic books, this kind of sign. Most 99.999% of the time, they're all repop. And you can tell by the rust, it's it's fake. It's manufactured on to the metal. Two, it won't be as heavy. It's lightweight. The gas station signs, 
those are very expensive and you definitely want to do your homework. You want to look, has it been redone? Do they have any pictures before and after? Can you get any sort of province on it? You know, can you, is there a trail? Where did that person get it? Do they have pictures or receipts or something to prove that it was actually vintage? And that's what a lot of times you have to do with stuff that's been restored. Plus, get it from a reputable dealer. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Just a few ways that you can tell vintage from Repop. If you haven't yet, be sure and hit that subscribe button with that little bell. We will be back on Saturday with your next video. We're going to be out at an antique mall just looking for some vintage mirrors. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.